Hi, I'm Zeemless, and today is Friday, which means it's time for a new how to base. And today, I'm going to show you how to make this sound. Uh, I don't have a camera because it's freaking out and it's getting a little weird, and exploits can be giving me issues, so I'm going I'm to keep this, keep this basic. Speaking of basic, this sound is super basic. It's uh, a pretty staple sort of dubstepy bass sound. And like, for the longest time, I actually didn't know how to do this sound because I assumed that it was a kind of FM that generated it. And I feel like most people do as well. And they, and they try and you can get kind of close and you can do sort of interesting things with it, but you're not going to get that sound with FM. Um, and there's actually a lot of interesting reasons why you would think it's FM or even RM for that matter. But uh, as it turns out, it's a lot more basic. So let's have a look at this. It's distorted. It's very distorted. And the basic way this works is that you have one tone that's bass level, one tone that's a bit higher. And you crutch them together really, really hard. Ta-da! That's really the basic, the basic basis of it. That's really all there is to it. There are some ways that you can sort of calibrate the sound, and there's also specific usages that make the sound that you're probably thinking of that you're thinking, like, this is close, but there's some things missing. And I'll explain to you some of the things that could be missing. One of the things is that because we're crunching up this bass level tone with a high level tone, what's happening, and the reason why I honestly assumed that this was FM process before, is because the when the higher amplitude uh, moments of the oscillation of the bass tone happen, they're pushing up against the much faster, higher pitch tone, which causes it to get attenuated for a second. This is actually very close to the behavior of what ring modulation would be, which is why a long time ago, I actually did a how to base on this pretty simple, uh, in a similar way. I think it was actually how to base 18, and I actually assumed that it was ring modulation causing this effect. I was a bit confused because at the time, I was basically assured that nobody who was making this sound used Citrus to do it, and I, I was a little confused, but it made a simpler sound, so I kind of left it alone. Um, anyway, as a result of this, if it sounds a bit too modulated, like it's a bit too crunchy for, you know, the bass tone being in there, you can actually change that by turning down the bass tone. Basically, the lower the bass tone is, the more the higher tone gets its own sort of isolation. And so if you want it to sound sharper, that's how you do that. Uh, something else that usually happens is that people like to modulate the pitch of the higher tone. You can do this with an envelope, for example, on every hit so that it uh, just starts on and does a kind of... Like, that's a pretty common thing right there. Uh, beyond that, in the example tone that I had made earlier... I have a whole bunch of stuff linked to X. And one of the things I have linked is actually the pitch of the second operator. The second operator is also a triangle with a little bit of skew going on. You can really use whatever you want as a higher tone. I'd however recommend that if you want this particular behavior to stick to square based tones, which does include a sine wave. Because if you distort a sine wave, you get square harmonics. A triangle is a square harmonic type waveform. It just has a different phase you know, configuration. Whereas a saw wave has a bit more density in uh, harmonics, which can cause a bit I mean, it doesn't sound bad, but it sounds different. Um, I mean, the skew option that I included a little bit on the on the on the triangle actually probably imparted a little bit of square har or saw harmonics, but it's not a lot. Anyway, I'm modulating the pitch, and I have this double curve option going on. And the reason why I'm doing that is because if I move linearly, this means that even though I am moving linearly, the, the pitch parameter is, stay, is sticking closer towards the octaves than anything else. This means that it'll stay more towards the tone that works for itself. Of course, you actually just went there. You might have, you might remember, you be reminded of a certain certain songs that actually use the higher pitch and change the note of the higher pitch to uh, actually be different tones to, to make kind of cool chords. And you don't actually need to have internal oscillators doing this. You could actually just play. Uh, the lower tone, the higher tone in the piano roll, and then run that into the distortion and have an identical, an identical effect. You could even do, you know, uh, slide notes, and you can modulate volume of the individual notes with slide notes, and you get a pretty similar effect. However, I mean, more 
detailed modulations would be a bit difficult. Um, but, but it's possible. It's very possible. I'm also modulating the volumes on both of these parameters, both these operator, operators, oppilators, to go all the way off. However, the second one takes a little bit longer to go off. Uh, it, won't, it doesn't actually take longer to both go off at the same point, but as you can see, if I bring this down here, the bass tone comes off in linear, but the, high, the higher tone actually is, has a higher level until they're, they're both off. It's actually a cool effect if you actually keep smoothing on. It's like a bit of a decay. I kind of dig that. Um, anyway, I have it at pitch 16, even though I was discussing using pitch 32 as my as my default. And this is because um, in the pitch out window, the pitch window is plus an octave and minus an octave, where the center being the original parameter. And so if I wanted the top to be 32 and the bottom to be 0, then the middle needs to be 16, that's why that's 16. So that's all there is to that. You can actually change the, the width of the parameter by this knob, this knob here. So many wrong buttons. This is the pitch envelope sort of range, and by default it's at an octave, you can turn it all the way up to four octaves, where, where once this was representing one octave, but now it represents four octaves. That would be quite an impressive range for certain things. Uh, so that's all there is to that. Now, I'm, I'm doing this with citrus, and beyond stuff like the, the bending that I'm doing here, you could do this with anything that can create two sine waves. Any plugin at all. Or even, like I said, play the chord itself. So even something you can just generate one sine wave. You could do it with a sample of a sine wave. You don't even need a plugin. This is, that's how basic this is. So much so that I'm not actually going to give you this patcher. Because everything that I just described should really be very easy. And normally I do that just to make things simple, but I want you all to learn. To learn learn up. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and to whitelist me on your ad blockers so that I can make some monies and stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.